my name is Connie uh, and I'm the writer, art and creative director of my game studio called Yonumai. We created the story-driven adventure called Sea of Solitude, which I will talk about today. I will give you a short introduction about my background um, so you see how it all influenced like, Sea of Solitude. I started my career um, with 17 uh, at the biggest German comic house in Berlin, drawing for their monthly comic series. Um, as I have loved uh, video games uh, since I was a child, um, as soon as the first Games Academy uh, opened up in Berlin, um, my chosen hometown, um, I applied and successfully got an internship and became a game designer. Um, I work mainly as an art director in the games industry uh, up until I founded my own company, uh, Yomai, together with Boris Monza, uh, one of my best friends. Sea of Solitude um, is our first multiple platform title, um, the first big 3D game we made and the first story-driven game. Um, we are so proud that we finished it at all <laughs> with uh, like the small 12 people team we had been back then. Our vision was when humans get too lonely, they turn into monsters. Um, and first, I want to show you how that looks like. Is this real? In this world that I live in is empty and cold. The loneliness cuts me and tortures my soul. I'm no child of destiny and no fortune son. I've just chased you so long now. I'm too weak to run. A new day is here, but nothing is new. Alone in my room, I tremble. Today, I will talk about the art direction of Sea of Solitude in depth. I will often use the acronym like SOS, um, so just so you know, I don't cry out for help uh, when I say that. I'm going to talk about uh, how emotions informed and inspired the visual style of the game. We will cover a lot of ground, looking at how the style of uh, SOS is heavily influenced by emotions, what aspects were important when building our vision for Berlin, what makes our vessel so special, um, why uh, the monsters look like they do, and how limitations inspire features. So in SOS, you play a woman named Kaylee who suffers from such strong loneliness that her inner feelings, that the anger, uh, feeling of hopelessness, worthlessness, turn to the outside and she becomes a monster. On her journey to become human again, she one by one meets her family members uh, who each suffer from different kinds of loneliness and become monsters too. First, I want to talk about the general idea that became the base of like um, everything uh, and um, influenced every area of art and design. We wanted to make a game where we would um, uh, start from one emotion and build like everything around it, literally turning the inside, the inner feeling out. K is basically a representation of me and uh, the path I went through to overcome my struggles. 
I wanted to share um, uh, my journey in form of a game. If we look at her, uh, we see a black void as if someone like spilled like ink over like the otherwise colorful painting. Her presence um, on the screen uh, is a personified void, if you will, um, represent a representative uh, for the loneliness and hopelessness of her situation. I can tell you from the feedback we got uh, after the release and the massive um, inspiration I drew from real life experience that on one side, this approach to develop a game, um, yeah, is one of the biggest chances, like from personal uh, uh, background, then that the, the biggest chance to, to be artistically unique and successful. But <laughs> it's also one of the biggest risks um, for the development of a game, um, as you constantly, sometimes like for years, um, need to deal with this topic. <laughs> so um, drawing your game story from your own life can be very tough. Seeing K every day meant uh, being confronted with my personal struggles at work every day. So basically, I always had my baggage with me. Mechanically and artistically, I wanted uh, an iconic gadget on K's back that represents this feeling of emotional ballast. Um, which K isn't processing in a healthy way. In the game, you put manifested like struggles or worries in this backpack to clear the environment of it. Um, as the game like progresses, this backpack gets bigger and bigger uh, until it bursts open um, and overwhelming K um, all at once with the struggles she put in there and causing her, her to have a nervous breakdown. The backpack also serves as a visual help to spot K even in the darker areas of the game. My show's narrative perspective was not just literally uh, t uh, telling and showing you what happened, but putting it all in a metaphorical world so people could make up um, their own mind put in their own thoughts and past into Sea of Solitude. Another cornerstone um, of SOS is my artistic background. As mentioned, I started uh, my career as a comic artist, and I'm in general a huge comic fan. Uh, my first big comic love had been the manga Akira. I especially love the the comic style is semi-realism, so not completely realistic, but like rah, a mixture between. Like, for example, Akira, and I tried to put it into Sea of Solitude 2. Um, so the last cornerstone is my origin. Um, I was born and grew up in a fishing village um, directly on the shore. My family had been fishermen, are ah, still fishermen. Um, so swimming, uh, boat driving, um, the seagulls, water are very common for me. It's where I'm from. Those points, um, the metaphorical narrative perspective of my personal story, um, partly um, my professional background uh, and the law for comics and me growing up directly on the shore had been the base for all artistic decisions. Let's start with the environment art. The story of Sea of Solitude um, plays out in case mind. That means that what she goes through in real life, we see through her inner eyes. For the setting I choose, Berlin, the city where I live now for 20 years already, um, I tried to make a more romanticized version of Berlin. Um, for example, like uh, the Japanese artists portray Germany often, like uh, in Ghibli movies, like uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, here as an example. Um, so we partly took original places from Berlin um, and remodeled it for Sea of Solitude. One example is the above-ground subway station called Bülowstraße. Um, here is the is in-game version, you see. Um, and here is the original in-game. Original. Um, <laughs> we reduced the detail uh, like to a minimum. 
um, necessary to, to fit our style, but still kept the most prominent details to keep it recognizable. The overboarding feeling um, Kay has throughout the majority of the game is isolation and that she is desperate to try and connect with people. With these basic emotions of her, I decided um, that the city uh, should look like an, uh, yeah, should look as empty as possible. No, uh, yeah, nearly no sign of life uh, uh, above the water, like even plants are missing. I didn't uh, want to show um, a post-apocalyptic setting, which would have washed out the metaphorical meaning. So it's a normal, modern, clean city. It's just empty, uh, as if the people just vanished from one second to the next. Um, what we did so was putting everywhere on the ground uh, um, a sand uh, to um, enhance the feeling of an ocean. So here you can see um, uh, 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 some signs of disruption uh, in the far corner. Um, so only the outer circle of the city looks like this. The further away you get from the center of the mind of K and of the city, the houses begin to like vanish or like, like crumble down and they begin to sink and, and uh, uh, into the ocean and are crooked and even the streets and trains are damaged, if you will. Um, throughout the prototyping phase, we encountered an interesting challenge. Berlin, <laughs> Berlin's houses include like rooftops and walls are, yeah, yeah, they, they are like problematic uh, for interesting level design compared, for example, to New York City. Um, if you look at it here, like these ha the houses in Ber Berlin have rather like clean design and like nothing beside balconies uh, stick out of the walls like very much. No, no ACs uh, or outer fire escapes. And we Germans rarely put advertising posters on top of buildings or something. So all of these things that are often seen in, uh, on American households are missing uh, in, uh, in, in, in Berlin. So on top of the, the, these design issues, uh, we Germans grew up with um, a, a ton of American media, like be it movies, music, comics, like it almost feels like home to us because we are constantly like having it in, uh, in the media. Uh, how America looks like and what they are doing. So, um, so it almost feels like feels like home, but it isn't our home. So it took us quite a while to create an explorable a gameplay, like explorable architecture that still looks like somehow like Berlin. So we basically extruded like everything more than it is in reality. Um, here are like uh, some examples, like this flat to typical Berlin house wall. Um, so, so if we extruded it, so light and shadow display would be a bit more intense. So that that, but also most important that uh, the house walls and the rooftops become explorable pathways. So. The constant, oh, I'm sorry for the image here. Um, the constant urge to put in American architecture had been quite big. Um, but we soon saw that even when we accidentally um, put just one detail, like a typical, the typical iconic uh, American rooftop water tanks, which you see uh, on the right, um, you, suddenly our complete effort to portray a European city uh, had been destroyed. So, Another basic design rule for me uh, is less is more. Um, to achieve a distinctive sea of solitude environment art, I tried um, to design it with as few like details as possible. Um, but still, like every detail needed in there to make the architecture believable. For me, to make architecture believable, the most important aspect to get it to feel right is to understand its, its function and to include the aspects that are needed to put and hold it into 
the place where it's meant to be. So a tiny example is like the balcony railings. The metal plate that is tied to the wall with the boltings to hold like the construction in place is something that I wanted the artist to add, this little thing. While other parts, like decoration and aspects, could be reduced to a minimum. We applied, <laughs> okay, we applied everything I said to circa, circa to exactly 159 unique buildings. <laughs> at least 90 of these buildings were used at least twice or up to four times revisited like twice or up to four times within the whole game, which made the design of the city and the polishing so challenging with only one 3D artist beside me, one extra 3D artist and the two, two level designers. Um, so, and I explain now more in detail, we come now to the biggest topic uh, of the whole production, water. So um, I love games very much where I constantly roam in the same environment um, so it, it is more memorable like it, it starts feeling like home like resident evil or dark souls or gone home uh, are like some examples so when i did the first um level design sketches i tried to apply um what i call the spaghetti level design so you come back um always to the same area again, or often to the same area again, to different perspectives. In our case, the different perspectives are like rising and lowering the water level. So it was a key to that, um, yeah. And uh, I, it also became one of the most yet yeah, unique features for the SOS uh, art, yeah, art-wise, but also like gameplay. Um, the water is like, um, the biggest symbol we we have in the game uh, you're literally walking or swimming through a flooded world and it, it, this flooded world is like flooded by the main character's tears so um her very own ocean of tears from the very beginning i wanted to yeah, there's a water to feel like cozy, uh, as cozy as possible, like clear, as if you look into a swimming pool, but even with uh, without realistic like refraction, so that you sense that is that it is no real water, but might have a different meaning. Um, the clearness combined with a spaghetti level design <laughs> lets you see areas underwater, um, um, that, uh, the water surface that you like later in the game will have access to. Here are some crappy examples, <laughs> uh, some examples of the wa water settings um, that we could adjust like wave speed. Or wave height, uh, foam color, foam distortion, foam uh, the fog underwater. Like we could, like uh, um, yeah, regulate every every everything of this uh, every of this aspects. The key design rule I gave uh, to my environment artist was I want the SOS environment to look like a holiday destination with many islands and gentle beaches. Um, it took us a while uh, to find the right like angle uh, and color of the rooftops. So they are really giving you that beach feeling while still looking like rooftops. Like, uh, like a lot of rooftops normally are like this in, in Berlin. And we have like to, to find the angle that is almost look like the beach, but still like the Berlin rooftops. It was really a challenge, but interesting. Um, both, um, but those, those, those aspects uh, combined, like the clear water, the spaghetti level design, and the beach feeling of the rooftops, are one of the key elements that, uh, uh, of uh, the distinctive environment art of Sea of Solitude. Um, I knew we had several heavy topics uh, uh, we talk uh, about in SOS, so I felt like giving the game a light-hearted visual appeal as often yeah, as possible was really important and, and essential that and that it's it's uh, that we don't flood 
the player with negative feelings all the time from all angles, like everywhere. So this is uh, was really important to me to um, achieve that lighthearted feeling to um, to compensate for the happy topics. Uh, uh, we have a strong color palette, uh, color palette um, with many different weathers. Um, so we try to achieve that. Same as the water height um, is affected by the emotions of K, uh, um, the weather is also affected by her mood and connected to her mood. Um, so from very early on, um, it became clear that the sunny weather that represents the feeling of positivity and adventuredness um, needs to be are present as often as possible. Mm. When we made the first roadmap of color schemes based on the emotion K is going through in the game, there was way too much darkness. Um, I remember how um, uh, yeah, uh, playtesting made us almost feel like depressed as the set story and the set color scheme um, over a long period was just uh, it was just way too much. So I started uh, to try to give uh, the negative weathers, like the rainy weather, for example, um, and, uh, where the huge underwater creature is lurking, a more positive vibe of colors, especially for the water. Um, I tried to give the water um, uh, the look less scary. I tried to make it look like less scary by making it appear to glow um, from the depth. Um, um, I made the background. I made the background fog lighter than the fog close by, and um, I gave it a bit more purple and blue, um, as uh, it would have initially. Yeah, it, it was important uh, to put it in to help calm the tense feeling. So, in the second level. I wanted to portray the heated situation uh, between the parents of Kay, um, the boiling suppressed anger of them both, of the parents. It was clear red was the main color of choice here. But um, same as in the rainy weather, we mixed, uh, we, uh, we needed to mix some uh, more calming colors such as yellow and brown into the scene. The glowing effect of the water being able to see far uh, and clear what's going on beneath the water surface was important again uh, to fight against uh, the too intense feeling of the story portrayed in that level. It was really important that we added it. And as you can see um, in level two and three, um, the water and, uh, and the sky are covering much more of the screen, really like drowning the city in their colors uh, because the water level has risen so much in these levels uh, already. So as often as possible, possible, we put sunny weather parts into the game to let the player relax uh, before we pushed uh, them into like tension <laughs> again. This color scheme of the boyfriend's uh, level had been the easiest to achieve. Like we show someone who hides his depression uh, behind appearing like totally fine and happy and healthy, showing this whole city of the game um, suddenly, suddenly under a, a sick, fluffy white snow cover was fitting perfectly to the mood we wanted to transport there. So this all white um, cozy feelings came right before the final level. Our main character finally faced her own issues. Um, so we're portraying a breakdown, the absolute feeling of being completely alone and numb. It was clear I wanted to have it as dark and black as possible, no colors, dense fog. So I hope you can see anything here. Um, <laughs> in general, we had many issues with our main color black in the game. How dark can you like uh, turn the game before uh, it becomes hard to watch or uh, or understand where you are? 
Um, a, a huge issue, issue is uh, uh, the many different monitors we needed to adjust the game colors to. I always wanted to go as dark as possible. But when we tested the game uh, on another PC, it was often like simply pitch black. Um, we present, prevented total navigational loss um, of the player by adding two things. One uh, was um, a subtle light source around K, um, so the player could always um, see what is around them. The second important help was, again, to make the background fog lighter than the fog close by, so you have the silhouette. With that, you can always see like this, this silhouette of the surrounding uh, clearing with which with, with, with functions as, as landmarks. Uh, with those tricks, uh, I could finally have my pitch black parts too. <laughs> um, so one of the the biggest challenges when we created um, Sea of Solitude had been our manpower, like um, creating a game of that size with a team of twelve made us come up with like unique design processes. Um, as I mentioned before, I, I had been not only the art director, but also the brighter main game designer, uh, had with the level design, uh, did the level design sketches, and level uh, did the level art with one other level artist beside, um, and had other responsibilities like being the, the company had. And, and so in the first years of the concept phase, I just had one programmer helping me with like um, Sea of Solitude and we needed to work on other games too that kept uh, like the company afloat while we were finding the right approach for Sea of Solitude. So it was like a really uh, uh, just two, two people team at the beginning, me and one programmer. So I basically just had time to do one key artwork for the environment art at the beginning. So uh, I did it in my favorite 2D tool, like Photoshop, <laughs> Adobe Photoshop. I usually work with like many layers in Photoshop and often use like the uh, um, so-called blending modes uh, for, the, uh, for those layers, like multiply, like overlay and transparency. I use transparency, gradients and masks. I love using all this for my my, my, my style. So when I finished that one key artwork, I walked up to my one programmer <laughs> and showed him exactly how I made it, this key artwork in Photoshop, and asked him if, if, if he can reproduce this in Unity as a tool for 3D environments. So that he creates something in Unity that I can work the same way I would work in 2D Photoshop. Because of the tiny team size, we early on decided to not use any textures um, or mo uh, in the environment. So even like cracks on the wall um, uh, and the leaves are triangles. And that had been a huge advantage um, as we didn't need it to unwrap anything or, or, or texture. Uh, we, and we could scale and squeeze the models freely. We also didn't um, need to spend time creating textures, as mentioned. And because of this, we could build almost a whole city district, like a real whole city district with just one environment artist me. Um, so to bring life um, to the the uh, untextured environment, I asked my programmer for various tools to help me. Coloring the shadow and ambient occlusion was really important that I could like really color it however I want. Um, we also misused the specular component of the materials in Unity and used um, just slightly different colors within this specular gradient. So when you move through the world of SOS, this effect brings more life into the world without you really noticing it. It makes SOS look less blunt. 
Um, that was a really um, cool sack, um, uh, I feel. <laughs> um, so uh, I used the gradient in Photoshop to create like distance fork and also ground fork, like for the, this concept art I did. So the specialty in SOS had been that I needed fork over and under water, but the fork over water shouldn't affect the, uh, the, uh, everything underwater and vice versa. So our programmer, Dirk, step by step built me a weather system tool in Unity where I could almost use the same workflow I had in Photoshop. With that, I didn't need to spend time painting artworks, but I could directly build a one-to-one -one example for my whole team where they didn't need to interpret my drawings, but could see like the final product and use that as a blueprint for everything they cr needed to create, create and see of solitude. So remember, we were only 12 people. We need to iterate, iterate, iterate fast. Uh, and if you do, um, the same, I advise you to build tools that makes you as flexible as, as possible. So um, that brings me to the second biggest art direction aspect next to the environment art, the monster design. In general, um, we have two different types of monsters uh, in SOS case monsters and the monsters of the family of K. All of them are based on the human behind it, mixed with the biggest emotion they have. These aspects manifest into their monster form. So <laughs> when I did the very first sketch of uh, monsters in Sea of Solitude, I sat down uh, in front of a blank paper and I imagined like how I uh, would feel like at, uh, yeah, at when I'm at the absolute lowest point, like angry and sad. So I rather scratched like over the paper and, and then drawing uh, like anything particular but rah, and a black ball of lines um, that came out of this session. So I, I, I started to bring like this basic idea of how manifested anger and sadness could look like uh, into a human form. Uh, while doing so, um, the wild lines uh, uh, turn slowly into a feathery fur. Um, then I imagined that in order uh, to still go on in life, not giving up, even though you go through all these, these hardships, you need to still have uh, a flame of hope like burning um, inside you. So I drew on uh, um, this, this monster uh, with, with monsters with red, uh, with a red orange light like shining from the inside out um, through their mouths and through their eyes. Um, this is the base of all monsters um, you encounter in the game. Uh, a black appearance with red shining eyes and mouths. A, a short comment before I go deeper into um, the family monster designs. This, the stories <laughs> and the story about the parents and about the brother are not taking from my life. I have no brother uh, and my parents are now happily married for uh, over 40 years, 40 years. Um, so those stories are inspired by colleagues and friends. Um, the brother monster um, had been um, the first family monster I did a concept art of. The bro brother gets bullied in school um, by his their former friends, and he suffers from harsh self-doubt, like unsure for a long time if he if he is a problem in this whole issue. Um, so the longer he is in the situation, the stronger his bullies are harassing him. Um, the first uh, of uh, the strongest emotion um, he has is like this urge to just want to fly away from this situation, like the birds 
he used to watch through um, the school windows during lessons. Um, this um, is why his monster version appears like a huge bird, uh, in particular a raven mixed with a human body. Um, he is constantly surrounded, constantly surrounded by his own weather, which reflects his emotions too. The second emotion next to the urge to fly away is uh, fear to be seen. He wants to hide because his body start harassing him as soon as they see him. Um, so uh, I created a sick fog around him, almost colorless, where he hides in, inside. His water uh, is special, as it is the only one uh, where you can instantly die. As mentioned before, the water stands for the ocean of tears, desperation, sadness. So his emotional state is already so bad that we decided to make his water deadly. Uh, when K falls into that, like water, hands like of the bullies of struck, grab her and drown her. The father of K is pondering for a long time already to want to leave his wife as they married rather early in their life uh, and just grew apart. They tried over many years to fix the marriage, um, but sometimes it just it just didn't work out. And the longer they tried, uh, the unhealthier the whole situation became. As he, the father, struggles to openly tell his wife uh, what he feels and rather avoid confrontation, he starts hiding from her by working way too much. So I drew his monster version as a big chameleon mixed with a human. I wanted to show... Um, with little details, like that he is still wear wearing his wedding ring, um, even as a monster, that he, he loves his family. We encounter him first on the skyscraper where his office is. I wanted that the building looks almost destroyed. The father monster and the mother monster uh, fighting for a long while already. She tried to get him out of the skyscrapers. And with this, she destroyed it almost. Also, I designed the interior of the building. Or I, I had the idea for the design of the, uh, the interior building as rather empty and cold. Um, same as the father feels. He sits on top of the building, angrily, angrily crying out. His screams uh, produce steam streams that comes out of every wet vent inside the skyscraper and pushes K, the player, away. He, the, the father monster tries to avoid touching the water, the ocean of tears, like the plaque, as he is unwilling to really deal with his own issues. He can't even swim. The mother monster um, looks like a giant octopus uh, mixed with a female head. <laughs> she is about 10 times or a lot bigger uh, than the father monster. Um, I imagined like a loving mother that desperately tries to hold the family, the whole family together, tries to hold onto like everything and keep it from crumbling apart. So she needed many arms and I immediately thought of an octopus. The mother monster is of, uh, often completely underwater. And that means that she is constantly worrying and sad. But as soon as her daughter or husband shows up, she comes out of the water and at least try to appear confident. Um, the mother monster and father monster um, share a huge weather surrounding them. Um, so we have this dramatic like red and orange colors throughout most of their level. It stands for the end of their partnership, but also the heated tension surrounding them. The water level is much higher 
than in the brother's level beforehand. Uh, as both, like the mother and the father, suffer from a profound loneliness within their relationship that affects the whole family, including their children. The final argument those two have in the destroyed version of the home in the game, it looks like a bomb crater. I hope you can see that in the concept. Um, when the player comes to the home at first, it's still intact. And it's uh, also the only place next to the end of the game where you see plants and vegetation, plants and vegetation in general. It uh, stands for that Kay feels most healthy there at her home. So she can see the life which she can't in throughout most of the game. She can see it there. Um, so uh, the monster, the boyfriend monster is the most unique one of all family monsters. Kay's boyfriend suffers from depression, um, but tries to appear fine to the outside. He is doing it pretty well until he falls in love with Kay and is finally forced uh, to open up about his struggles. So when we meet the boyfriend monster first, he appears like a shiny white wolf, like white lone wolf. Throughout the development, the whole development of Sea of Solitude, I educate myself about mental health a lot. Uh, but also about metaphors, symbols, and so on. The lone wolf is a typical symbol for a man that tend to act independently and spend more time alone than in groups. Um, it is not only him I portray uh, shiny and white. In his level, the whole Berlin district where SOS takes place is snowed in. Um, he is uh, like really, really good at camouflaging his real feelings. So he put the whole game <laughs> under a cozy white snow layer. Um, so uh, every time he interacts with Kay in the game um, and she touches him, parts of his white perfect camouflage falls off and we see the black dog beneath it, which is a known metaphor for depression. I again designed him part human and part animal. Kay, the main character itself, I wanted to portray, portray in, different, in, in a different way, in, as ripped apart into her basic emotions. All of these emotions coming to life, and she needs to interact with them throughout the entire game. Um, I took her strongest emotion, emotions like self-doubt, joy, self-destruction, hope, and willpower. The playable character represents willpower, okay, the willpower. She looks much more like a human um, than every other monster, uh, as she is the closest to recover. Um, but of course, I wanted uh, like to design um, the main character more human, so the player can project themselves better onto it. Um, so MK is actually completely naked, uh, which was important to me to portray how vulnerable she is in the state of uh, change and the transition to a more healthy life. The only thing K wears is her backpack. It carries um, the baggage we all carry throughout our life. She um, doesn't know how to cope with these all these emotions um, she is going through. So um, the, the, the backpack like becomes bigger and bigger throughout the game until it's like really huge and it bursts and forcing her to finally overcome her own struggles or all, all deal with all her emotions. Self-doubt is the first other monster you meet, uh, you really interact with and meet in the game. Um, all of Kay's monsters are partly her human body. Like, uh, so um, self-doubt, I choose to mix her with um, 
like the human body with a snail, like especially um, with a shell. Um, Self doubt as an emotion always feels uh, to me um, uh, as it ends up trying to hide somewhere like it's hiding self doubt and you hide um, mostly of course at home so if a snail shell is uh, is in their home is their home the self doubt monster um, also has teeth like a small child uh, I wanted to show that um, what comes out of the mouth of uh, self doubt is not nothing educated or, or um, but rather like blunt or like warm huh? so, so but often true but uh, 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 so more childlike the self doubt monster shrinks over the course of the game until she turns from like self doubt to healthy doubt. So first she is house high and super scary. Uh, um, and so at the end of the game, Kay can even take her in her arms. She's like a baby that this healthy doubt in size. Self-destruction is a um, mixture between Kay and a siren and a shark. Like she, she tries to lurk Kay back into the water, into the ocean of tears, so she can so so she can swallow Kay again. When I started scribbling her, she was rather soft at the beginning, like self-destruction, like, and a whale, like a whale. Um, but uh, the more her role um, became clear like the main antagonist uh, and the representation of self-destruction. Um, the, the, uh, she more turned like she turned uh, into a, a, a super creepy being um, with this huge sharp teeth you see. Um, okay, so uh, just her torso, yeah, just her torso and that her eyes are in front of her uh, of the head and not on the side reminds us that there is uh, also some human part in it. If you look really closely, you can see that the feet uh, of Kay's body meld together to uh, to form a fin in this monster. Um, she is always like under water. The ocean of tears is her natural habitat. So um, self destruction. Same as self-doubt also um, shrinks throughout the game so that K can almost lift uh, even self-destruction at, at the end. Um, self-destruction is probably the monster you see the most on the internet. The way she behaves and the, the way she swims uh, is something we are very proud of <laughs> um, because it needed so much work to get it right and so much attention with complex collision checks to to, to turn her around uh, like this the snaker animation that gives her like this sign curve style uh, so much work <laughs> um, so joy joy we yeah we put joy in the category of monster even though she doesn't appear that way at the beginning and is rather special in general i think of joy uh, as a rather innocent feeling um in, in innocence i connect with her childhood so i choose to draw joy as a child version of Kay. um she wears a yellow raincoat um so she is completely in, invulnerable to the ocean of tears she even can fly just to be sure that she never touches like the water uh, in the boyfriend uh, uh, monster level, Joy finally shows her monstrous side. Um, she turns into an obsession monster and attacks Kay when she tries to get in. The, when Kay tries to get in the way between Joy and the boyfriend, obsession has sharp teeth, and I changed the color to purple for real readability purposes. Um, another entity in the game is a boat uh, of K that she drives. It stands for the hope of K. It also carries a sunny weather uh, with it, uh, like a, like a, a sphere, and um, in, in, uh, in which she gets like from joy at, at the beginning. Like she gets a sunny weather from joy. It functions as a safe zone. I wanted to design the boat um, in a robust but simple way. 
um, like hope itself. It, it is not an emotion that is loud or profound. And I feel it is the most important of them all. The houseboat um, is the new version of the family's home. So underwater, you can see the broken pieces of the family home. So above the, above the water, uh, it is a new home, a new houseboat that will carry all family members with K into their new chapter of life, built from the old life. So I, I often get asked what movies like uh, comic books, uh, books and, or whatever inspired me for Sea of Solitude. I then always try to come up with art I love, uh, but the truth is that I didn't look at any other art or any other yeah, art to get inspired for Sea of Solitude. It came from the inside, like um, art-wise, like the visual I drew from everything I learned, the visual, like everything I learned uh, so far, and the style I have developed throughout my life so far. For the story, I just let out what I already had in my mind, my feelings. There had been a dangerous situation in between when I looked at other art for once too much. Um, when The Last Guardian, the game The Last Guardian came out, I was so excited about it um, that I almost um, studied like this design of Trico, of this huge animal in the game. At the same time back then, I was still designing the monsters of SOS. And at um, some point, my co-workers came to me uh, and said, like, Connie, um, your monster design looks so different now, almost like Trico. It was like a, a little bit like a shock, as I didn't realize this until the moment they told me about it, like, oh. um, gladly, I still could revert the damage back then I have done. So what I learned through the whole production um, of SOS, be it for the art, the story, or every um, creative uh, process, draw from what it's, is inside you. Then it will have the biggest chance to be unique. Adore others' art, but be careful to not adapt it accidentally. Um, I, I stopped looking at others' art too much at some point. Um, and I think this is why Sea of Solitude became a bit more unique. From now on, I will always follow the path of first looking inside me, take the strongest emotion or thought I have at the yeah, point in my life and use that as a base for the, for the art or the games I want to create. This way, uh, it will likely have the yeah, personality, have personality, and will be unique. And I think that is the key. We all, all the artists out there, want to achieve. Thank you. <laughs>